Hi, I'm Jan from Oslev, and I've been responsible for the production of the foundation works on the Karlatsau project in Gothenburg, Sweden. In this presentation, I will show how a unique foundation technology can support a 245 meter high skyscraper in complex ground conditions using large diameter segmental casing 70 meter into bedrock. In the beginning of 2017, Oslif was contracted to perform the foundation works for the skyscraper, which when complete will be the tallest residential building within the Nordic countries, with 593 flats on 73 floors over a total of 245 meters. That's just a little shorter than the Eiffel Tower. The building itself was designed to stand on 58 in-place casted concrete piles in a diameter of 2 meter. Corner and piles on the side should be drilled 5 to 7 meter into competent rock, while 3 to 4 meter was enough for piles in the center. The piles were finished 7 meter underground level and later connected through a 4 meter thick concrete slab. From existing ground level, we could expect 40 to 60 meter of Gothenburg clay, 2 to 12 meter marine sediments, and under that, a heavily sloping rock. While the Gothenburg clay is a loose, sensitive marine clay, The underlying frictional materials had a large percentage of big boulders and was highly permeable, which we later noticed as we drilled up concrete more than 15 meters from where it should be. The bedrock with a strength of up to 245 megapascal was sloping an average about 40 degrees from one end of the side to the other. Locally, this could mean a heavier or smaller angle. Actually, in one particular pile, we later found a vertical drop of 2 meter. We had discussed different drilling methods for the production of the piles. For example, DTH drilling, multi-hammer DTH drilling, pile top drilling partly, and fully cased Kelly drilling. From the decision to go with partly or fully cased Kelly drilling, which we had a lot of good experience with, following concerns emerged. Firstly, we had experienced on other projects that the clay could grow to the casing, which in a length of up to 70 meter represents a surface of about 440 square meter. The cohesion could make a retraction of the casing impossible and spoke for a shorter casing in combination with a bentonite stabilized borehole to the rock. The second concern was the drilling into the heavily sloping rock. This would require a directionally stable drilling tool in the process. Uh, a casing drilled on or slightly into the rock could provide the necessary guiding. The solution for these two concerns are quite opposite. For the first, a shorter casing is better. For the second, a casing to the rock is necessary. But our solution for this was to mobilize machinery with more than double of the capacity needed on paper, which means the largest drilling rig available at that moment. A Bauer BG55, a drilling rig of 250 ton, we called it Starke Kala, strong Kala in Swedish, and a Leffer VRM2500 oscillator, which we used to drill down and retract the casing. Here it might be in its place not only to tell about the biggest drilling rig, but also to brag about our personnel who, and I don't think anyone would disagree with me here, are the absolutely best team on large diameter drilling in Scandinavia. 
In the end, the investments in large machinery paid off. Whether the drilling rig nor the oscillator was troubled by the loads at any time, Although a significant growing of the clay to the casing could be measured, all casing could be drilled into bedrock and retracted without problems. Also, the transition into bedrock was possible to overcome. Every pile was equipped with cables for TIP measurements. This is thermal integrity profiling, which data was analyzed by our colleagues from CP Test in Denmark. Through core samples at the pile foot, it was found that a little segregation of the concrete had occurred, which was probably due to the depth of the pile and the velocity of the first concrete. These piles were later grouted and approved by the client though. Countless boulders, a sloping rock surface and a highly permeable layer above the rock were the challenges presented. Hard work, determination and honestly, at sometimes the ignorance of costs were the solution. After the works on the Kala Tower, our BG55 and drilling team was moved to Aarhus to drill piles for Denmark's highest building, the Lighthouse Project. 28 up to 70 meter deep piles in a diameter of 2 meter were installed partly cased with a bentonite stabilized borehole in the lower part. The 142 meter high building will entirely be built by Orslev. Since Christmas last year is uh, Starke Kala, though back in Gothenburg, where our team is working on the Westlingen project. Also, the BG55's little brother of 180 ton, uh, BG45, is working on this project where they produce second pile walls. Well, this is what I had. If you have any questions or you need any foundations for a skyscraper, please feel free to contact me or my colleagues. Thank you very much. <laughs>